Hello and welcome back. In our previous video, we learned some basics about delta life tables. We also created our first DLT pipeline, which you can see on my screen. Today, we are going to process some incremental data using the same pipeline. We are also going to understand how a declarative framework like DLT takes away all the complexity and makes the job easier for us. We are also going to see some internals about DLT pipelines. Now, before we can start this video, if you have not seen our previous video, I recommend you to go back and watch this video first. So, without any delay, let's begin. In our previous video, we read two of the datasets. One was customer and the second one was orders. And we joined both of them in order to aggregate it based on market segment. Now, we already know that DLT is declarative framework. It means whatever data sets, whether it is a materialized view, streaming table or view that we have created as a part of this DLT pipeline, we don't have to worry about managing those and DLT will take care of it. So if I expand the side panel from the right hand side, you can find the details about this pipeline and all of the data sets that we created as a part of this pipeline are being managed with this DLT pipeline with this particular ID. So what if, if I go and delete this pipeline, all of the data sets that you see will get deleted. And this is how DLT manages all of the data sets that you create as a part of this. So if we go into the detail of any of this data set, you will find this pipeline ID mentioned in the properties. And that's how Delta Life Table manages all of its data sets in its life cycle. Now, whenever we trigger a particular DLT pipeline, a new update is created. And the details of the run you can find under update details. You can find the information about the compute or the DLT cluster here in the bottom. You can find the details, Spark UI, the logs and the metrics from here. And if I click on this view logs in the bottom, we already know that all the events that happens as a part of DLT pipeline run are logged here. You can go ahead and click on that and see more information about them. Okay, now that we understand some more basics about a DLT pipeline, let's go ahead and run our first incremental load. Now, for today's session, I'm going to use the same notebook which is 00 DLT introduction and the same setup notebook which we have created in our previous session. But for the code that we have made in our previous session, I've just created a backup notebook that can be referred for the code changes that we did in our previous session. Okay. So I'll quickly switch back to our setup notebook. And in order to process some incremental data, we will randomly insert some 10,000 records from our samples table into the order raw table. Now, this orders raw table is an input for our orders branch streaming table, right? Let's go ahead and run this cell. Great, we can see 10,000 records inserted into the orders raw table, right? Let's go ahead and run our DLT pipeline now. So I'll go back to our DLT pipeline and I'll just click on start. Now it is creating an update and it is waiting for the resources. So the waiting for the resources will create a DLT cluster in the background. I'll pause the video here and I'll come back when this cluster is up and running. Awesome. Now if you see, we have already procured our resources and our DLT pipeline is in setting up tables step. Okay, so let's just wait for it. Great, our job is up and running, right? Let me just close the events tab from the bottom so that we can see it better. And let me just close the side panel as well. So I'll expand the view now. And if you notice something, this time the streaming table is only reading the 10K records that we have processed. Okay, and this is how incremental data can be processed using streaming tables. Now, let's just wait for it to complete. Great, our job is completed and we can see the aggregated goal table is also populated, right? Let's go back to setup notebook and see the count. So I'll go back to setup notebook and I'll quickly run a select star on the aggregated goal table. So I'll just run select star from. Awesome, you can see the counts, right? Let me just scroll up a bit and now you can see the counts here and now you can see the counts here, right? You can see the counts has increased in the bottom one because we have successfully processed the new 10,000 records which we have read incrementally using the streaming tables. Right. So we understand that streaming table is used in order to process incremental data. Okay. Now consider a case where your customer comes back and they ask you to add one more aggregated column in this materialized view in the aggregated code. Okay. So how do we do that? Let me just quickly switch back to our DLT introduction notebook. And now since our DLT pipeline is already running in development mode, we can use it for debugging. Okay. So we can connect that particular pipeline into our DLT code. So what I'll do is I'll click on this drop down. And I'm going to select this pipeline and I'm going to click on connect. So now you get a pop-up saying you are now connected to the DLT pipeline because this is a DLT code. Now we can very well validate and run the pipeline right now from the code here. Let me just close this for now. And let me just scroll down in the bottom and let's add the new aggregated column. So I'll quickly go back to our orders raw. And we are going to do a sum on total price based on market segment. So I'll copy this column from here. I'll quickly switch back to the notebook and we'll add one more aggregation here, right? So let me just put a comma here and I'll add sum of which is our column name order total price. And again, we are going to do a alias 
ऑफ सम ऑफ टोटल प्राइस ओके सो नाउ वी कैन एड दिस कॉलम हियर नाउ वी ऑल्सो डिड वन मिस्टेक सो दिस वॉज द काउंट बट वी नेम द कॉलम एज सम सो लेट मी जस्ट गो एड एंड चेंज इट सो वट आल डो इज आल चेंज द नेम ऑफ द कॉलम एज काउंट सो वी डिड टू चेंजेस हेयर फर्स्ट वी रीनेम्ड वन ऑफ द कॉलम and second we added a new aggregated column called sum of total price now consider if you are working on a normal etl pipeline you first have to go ahead and add this column in the tables and then write the transformation logic right but we don't have to worry about it here in the dlt let me just go ahead and click on validate so it will quickly run a validation on the code that we have created so let's just wait for it now you can see an error saying initializing has an error right let me just quickly go back to event log and if i click on this it will tell me that we have not imported sum right so what i'll do is i'll quickly scroll up a bit and i'll add sum here now you understand that if your pipeline is running in development mode you can very well connect that pipeline to that notebook and you can very well debug your code here okay so i think our validation is almost complete let me go to dlt graph and let me just click on this now you can see it has validated our dlt pipeline properly so we can go ahead and click on start in order to run this load so i'll just click on start So now, if you see, it is running our pipeline. You can even go back to our pipelines in order to see it, or you can visualize it here in the notebook itself. So let's just wait for it to complete. Awesome. Now, if you see, our pipeline just completed. But if you notice in the streaming table in the bottom, none of the records are red because we have already processed our incremental data, and there was no incremental data in order store to process, right? So this time, streaming table didn't read any data from the source. again our aggregated gold has also loaded right let's quickly switch back to setup notebook to see okay so i'll quickly go back to setup notebook i'll scroll down to bottom and i'll quickly rerun this query now awesome if you see now our column name has changed to count orders and we have added successfully the new column called sum of total price right so now you understand how easy it is for you to add new columns or modify existing table columns right in a declarative framework and this is the benefit that you get with delta live tables you can even rename tables for example if i go to my introduction notebook you can see the name of this metalized view is joint silver what if i want to change the name to order silver so let me just close this panel and i'll go to the joint silver so this is the name of joint silver right let's change it to order silver now since i have already added name parameter so the name at the function level will not matter right so the name would be order silver now so i'll just copy this and i'll make sure that we read this table now in the gold table let me just quickly validate great our validation completed successfully let's go ahead and run this pipeline so i'll click on start awesome our pipeline is running right now again if you see at the streaming table level we do not have any records read from the source because there was no incremental data loaded right again now if you check the name of the metalized view the name has changed to order silver now you understand how declarative framework takes away all the complexity you just have to write down the transformation the pipeline will take care of the background working so orders aggregated gold has also loaded since we have removed joint silver from the pipeline and added a table called order silver let's quickly go back you can see the old catalog here right you can see joint silver so let me just quickly refresh and now you can see the joint silver is gone and we have order silver and this is because all of the data sets that you see in a pipeline is managed by the pipeline so if you want to remove any of the data set you just have to remove it from the code and if you want to add any of the data set in a particular pipeline you just have to add it in the code dlt will take care of creating and removing the data sets automatically from the pipeline and that is one more benefit of declarative framework awesome now that we understand how incremental data load works in a dlt pipeline let's go ahead and see some internals about delta live tables i'll quickly duplicate this browser tab and i'll go to catalogs now what i'll do is i'll quickly expand the dev etl and i'll click on orders aggregated gold now if you see we have multiple tabs in unity catalog so let's go ahead and see the details so if i click on details if i scroll down you can see here pipeline id and that is what i was explaining so whatever data sets that are created as a part of pipeline are tied to a particular pipeline id which is the same pipeline id for our dlt right again you can find the type is metalized view okay now there is one more twist about it whatever views or streaming tables that we create the data is not directly stored under that rather these are all abstraction of an internal catalog so if you can see on the left hand side as soon as we ran our dlt pipeline a new catalog called databricks internal was created now if i expand this you can see the pipeline id here for this right and again it says dlt metalization schema and if i expand this you can find a lot of tables which are created now this internal schema is usually hidden from the developers and these are the underlying tables of all of the metalized view or streaming tables that we create 
For example, our orders aggregated goal materialized view is referring to this particular internal delta table. Okay. Now, one more point to note. If I click on the orders branch, which was the streaming table, and this is the internal table, right? Let me just go ahead and click on details. If I scroll down, you'll find a table ID here. And this is the exact location where your data would be stored. Okay. So we can quickly go back to our storage browser to this particular table ID and we can see the data for our streaming table, which is orders branch. So I'll quickly switch back to Azure portal. I'll go to meta store. I'll expand the meta store and I'll go into the tables and let's just quickly see the ID, which is 6163F. So I'll go back and I'll search for 6163F. You can see it here, right? Let me just quickly expand this. And now if you see, this is a delta table. Along with this, you can find one more folder here called DLT metadata. So if I expand this here, you can find checkpoints. And this is how streaming table maintains its incremental behavior. It uses checkpoint in order to track only the changes in the data and append them in the table in order to make sure that you only read incremental data, right? And now you understand what is the internal of a streaming table. Similarly, if I go back to catalog and if I go to orders aggregated goal, the materialized view will take care of all of your computations and will make sure that you get the up-to-date results out of it, right? And now you understand how materialized view and streaming tables are stored in the background using delta tables and the reason of incremental behavior of streaming tables. Great. Now, before we wrap up, let's go ahead and see one more important thing, which is lineage. Now, lineage is powered by Unity Catalog. Now that we have loaded our data for the tables, let's go ahead and click on lineage. And now you can see our orders aggregated gold is getting loaded by order silver. And that is an upstream, right? Let's click on the C lineage graph. As soon as I do that, you can see the arrows pointing that order silver is loading orders aggregated gold. Now, if I click on the plus button here, you can see the information about order silver getting loaded from customer branch and order branch. Even if I click on plus here, you can see customer raw is loading customer branch. Similarly, you'll find orders raw loading orders branch. Okay. So if I click on this, you can see the complete lineage graph of the data flow. Even you can track columns. For example, if you want to see the flow for count orders, you can click on this. And you can see the count orders is getting calculated from order scheme. Even you can click on this and you can track back to the particular table from where the data is getting loaded. And this is where lineage is very important to track down metadata. And this is powered by Unity Catalog. So it is not necessary that you'll see lineage only for Delta Live tables. We can also see lineage for simple tables. For example, if I expand bronze and if I click on tables and if I click on employee, we can see the data loaded for employee. So if we click on lineage, and if we see the lineage graph, we can find all the information about employee. So you can see employee here. This is getting loaded from employee updates. And these are all the tables that are getting loaded from employee. Okay. So this is one of the most important feature of Unity Catalog. It gives you power of lineage, which allows you to track back columns, tables in order to see how the data and the metadata is flowing. So let me just close this. And even you can see all the notebooks that are using employee data set. Okay. So and now you understand the power of lineage in Unity Catalog, which will help us to track data sets and metadata. I hope you have learned a lot about DLTs today. In our next session, we are going to use auto loaders in order to load some file into Lakehouse using DLTs. We are also going to see what is change data fit and CDC. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.